I am doing this for myself. I'm not locked into this. I don't have to do this. I make a choice every day to wake up and come to this job, make money for me. Hey guys, how you doing? My name's Connor. You're watching thrivingminimalist.com. Thanks so much for tuning in. Every single day I get an email in my inbox or a message or two or three in the comments of videos just like this one asking how can I change my job? Expressing, I hate my job. What can I do? I want to live a life of freedom, but I need money. I wanted to share with you a little bit about my story on work and making money and then talk about some ways that we can maybe change our perspective about money and about jobs so that we can feel better about what we're doing right now while making a plan and feeling hopeful about the future and about tomorrow. I think most of us have gotten to a place in work when the hatred gets so strong because we have lost hope. We've lost hope. We've lost the belief that our future can be bigger and brighter and better. And I'm really wanting to express to you that it can be bigger and brighter and better. And so I wanna use my little anecdotal experience, my story to help motivate you and inspire you, knowing full well that you do not wanna live exactly like I'm living. I'm the only person who wants to live exactly like I'm living. Your journey is going to be totally different, but take what resonates with you from my experience and use it for your own inspiration and for your own motivation and for your own journey. If you feel like you are in a place where you are rocking out, you're loving what you do for money, you're loving your life, please post in the comments down below and share your story. Okay, so here's the deal. I'm about four years in to quitting my job. I used to own a business, Property Preservation. It is a property management that is connected with the bank's mortgages foreclosures. So when a house would go into foreclosure, the bank sits on it for a little while. Sometimes it changes hands while all the legal stuff is getting worked out. It totally falls into disrepair 99 times out of 100. And in order to sell the property, the property has to be at a certain level of maintenance. So the bank would go online and find a big contracting company and hire them. Those big contracting companies would hire smaller contractors like me to actually go out and manage the properties. I saw some crazy stuff. I saw crack vials, I saw heroin needles, I saw blood, I saw feces, I saw guns, I saw broken glass, I saw homes destroyed, disgusting, and in total disrepair. And my job, although it was really fulfilling in some ways because I was my own boss, I set my own hours, and I was making my own money, it was really soul taking. It really sucked the energy out of me and I saw a side of life day in and day out that was rough. I was also working at the bare minimum 60 hours a week and more like 80 hours a week. In my opinion, for me, that is not sustainable. And so after a few years, I was totally burned out. By the time I was burned out, my relationship was burned out, my mind was burned out, my emotions were burned out. I was drinking every day because I wasn't happy. I was doing drugs when I could because I wanted fulfillment, some kind of satisfaction, some sort of feeling like hopefulness existed in the world. Everything kind of spiraled and got to a head and my wife and I separated. At that time, I just felt like, oh my God, I don't have any idea what I'm doing. This work that I'm doing was my focus, my sole focus, and it doesn't fulfill me and it's taking all of my life energy away. I felt like a shell. I felt like I had nothing. I needed something to wake me up and that was the impetus, the separation between my wife and I. That was my impetus. I was able during that time, despite drinking a whole lot, to really kind of step back and reassess. Okay, what do I need here to feel like I'm human again? And not even to feel happy, not even to feel like I'm thriving, just to feel like I'm a human effing being again. And the very first thing was to change my job. I just had to. It was too much for me. So I did, I changed my job. Started working for a landscape company because it took away the stress of running my own business. I could depend on a routine paycheck. I could go in, put in my time and leave. I was also working outside. I was making enough money where I could pay all my bills and remain kind of stress free. For me at the time, this was this was perfect. This was ideal. This is exactly what I needed. In that space, I was able to relax, get more energy for myself, 
cut down my hours from 80 or 60 hours a week to 40 and kind of regroup. I changed my diet, started exercising, started sleeping better. I cut alcohol and drugs out of my life. And over time, I developed a connection with myself. When I was able, I let go of the landscaping job and I started doing my own independent handyman work. Really relaxed, really chilled, just working enough that I could pay the bills, not thinking about saving a bunch of money, but really thinking about the savings of energy that I needed for myself to really discover what it was I wanted to do in this life, how I could feel happy and like I was really thriving. As things progressed, it turned out that I really enjoyed connecting with people. I really enjoyed hearing their story. I really enjoyed offering what I could for an ear, for a compassionate ear maybe some compassionate advice if they were looking for that. And over time, it was sort of revealed to me that I was good at it. So I decided to take a bunch of money, like all the money I had, and invest it in myself to become trained as an IFS therapist. IFS is a very specific modality of therapy that works incredibly well to foster self-love. And I'm all about it. I absolutely love it. And the reason I love it is because I used it on myself and I know that it works. I've been an IFS therapist now for over a year and that's where I make all my money. Today I'm drinking this fresh squeezed orange juice for $1.75 that I got just down the street. I'm living in this luxury apartment on the corner on a seventh floor where I have probably about a 250 degree view of the city. I'm in Chiang Mai, Thailand, one of the most beautiful cities in the world. Absolute incredible temperature, incredible food, very kind, loving people. Tomorrow I'll be getting on a plane back to California for about 10 days and then I'm traveling to a festival in Peru to teach acrobatics. Acrobatics was just something I picked up along the way of my journey and now I'm making money on it. And I'm sitting here making this video which will get thousands of views, which will pay me money, which will also bring clients to me. All of these things are not unattainable for you. None of them, not one of them. Not from the orange juice to the therapist job to the acrobatics to the travel, none of it is unattainable for you. All of it you can have if you want it. I assume that you want elements of these things, but you want it in your own way. The reason I'm talking so much about myself is to tell you that you can go from this human that maybe you feel like you are right now, which is like hopeless, maybe you've got a crutch of some sort, drugs or food or pornography or whatever it might be that you're just doing and like you know you don't really want to be doing it but you feel like you just that's the only place you feel alive for a minute you're working this job that you just kind of hate you can't wrap your mind around why the heck you're doing it you want to do something else but you just don't know where to start you can go from that place to chilling in thailand making all of your money online drinking fresh squeeze OJ, chilling with the most beautiful human creature you've ever laid eyes on, happy, in love with the world, with another human, with yourself. If you look at pictures of me four years ago, you wouldn't, you wouldn't recognize me. I look older, I've got more weight, I look haggard, I don't look happy, I don't look vibrant, I don't look as attractive, it's just a fact. You can go from this to this. And right now where I'm at, it's awesome. But guess what? Like this isn't where I'm, this is like, I'm not on a Mesa. I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going up. I'm not making this video so that I can say, ha ha, look, look man, I made it. Look how awesome I am. I'm making this video so that you know, I was kind of in a really rugged place. If I can go from that to this, I can promise you, you can. You can make big shifts, huge changes in your life. You can have your dreams. You can change your life, I promise you. I know that you can, I know this for you. Okay, so let's get down to like some nitty gritty stuff. Let's talk about perspective. Having a job doesn't inherently mean that you're gonna hate it. There's a lot of people who have jobs that they love. There's also an ability to go to a job and know, okay, this is just for the paycheck and I'm just gonna be here. I'm gonna put my best foot forward here. I'm gonna have a smile on my face and when the job is done, the job is done. I'm gonna go home and do my thing knowing the entire time that I am doing this for myself. I'm not locked into this, I don't have to do this. I make a choice every day to wake up and come to this job, make money for me so that I can have energy, so that I can use it the way I wanna use it. You're not a slave to your job, you chose this job. And at one point in time, I guarantee you, you were really excited about that job. You were so excited and pumped that you got hired for that job. You can stay in that state. The reason I think that we grow to hate our job is that we have lost hope. 
We have no dream. We have nothing to look forward to. So this is my practical advice. Create something to look forward to. Build your dream. I know it can be challenging to find energy, to find space, to focus on yourself when you're working 40, 50, 60 hours a week. Maybe you have a family. Maybe you have kids to support. Maybe you've got other things going on. I understand it's a challenge, but even if you were to take 10 minutes out of your day, every day, maybe that's in the morning, maybe it's right before you go to bed, and you spend that 10 minutes constructively writing down your passions, anything about your passions, anything about your dreams, anything about what your future five-year ideal self would be, you will change your life. We cannot make changes unless we dream. We have to dream. And I'm not talking about woo-woo stuff here. I'm saying very practically, you cannot tie your shoe unless your brain is thinking, I'm gonna tie my shoe. You cannot quit your job and live the life of your dreams unless you are actively thinking about what that looks like. You don't have to have all the answers. You just have to have the hope. You gotta have the drive. And in order to foster that, you need a few minutes every day just for you, just focused on it. The other thing to remember, this is a narrative in our head. Money will not make you happy. It's just a piece of paper. What it represents is freedom. It is energy. That is what you are looking for. So how can you get more energy and more freedom in your life? Forget making more money. Focus on getting more energy and more freedom. This is where minimalism can play a part in your life and be a practical tool to getting you from point A to point B. Minimalism will allow you to let go of the things in your life that are no longer serving you, to create more space for that positive momentum, for the energy that you're actually looking for when your brain says, I need more money. The last bit of practical advice is something that I've talked about a lot. I try and talk about it in every video because I believe so strongly in it. It is basically my mission statement. Self-love is the strongest tool you will find to change, to find happiness, to find joy, to find passion, to find contentment, to find yourself. I have a video on self-love. I would really encourage you to take a look at it, to discover kind of what it's all about, what I'm talking about when I say self-love and why it is so important. Spending 10 minutes a day writing down your passions or writing down what your future ideal life would look like is developing a connection with self-love. It is putting you first it is sending intention and awareness onto you. It is building a positive narrative for you. That is all self-love. There's a lot of other ways to connect with yourself through self-love. And if you watch the video, you'll see what I'm talking about. There is nothing fundamentally wrong with your job. There is nothing fundamentally wrong with working. There is nothing fundamentally wrong with money. We are looking to diagnose a problem and we look at the symptoms the job the loss of money the debt these are just symptoms this is not the cause of the problem the cause of the problem is we don't have passion we don't have hope we don't have life inside of us the awesome thing is you can develop those while working while having a job while being in debt while having a mindset created around money you can work on developing passion on developing your life, on developing a connection with yourself, on developing happiness. I really hope you liked the video. Thank you so much for watching it to the end. Much, much love for you. I work as a therapist. I also work as a coach, as a business coach, as a health coach, as a life coach. You wanna reach out to me, you wanna do some counseling, you wanna do some coaching, let me know. I love it, it's my passion, I'm all about it. Look me up, thrivingminimalist.com. Much love to you and take very, very good care of yourself. Mwah. Peace. My minimalist apartment here in Austin, Texas. What I'm packing for my to be married. I used to own a house. I used to own a rental property. I used to work a 60 to 80 hour uh, job. That was.